Hello friends, this video on friction part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we know that at certain situations friction is useful, in certain situations friction is uh, not useful, not desirable. So depending upon the situation, if we want, we can find out ways to increase friction or to reduce friction. So here in this section, we are going to talk about increasing and reducing friction. So let us first focus on increasing friction. So what do you think? In which situation will we want to increase the friction? Where friction is desirable, of course. So friction can be increased deliberately in situations where it is necessary. Wherever it is important, wherever it is good, wherever it is desirable, we will try to increase friction. Now, how can we increase friction? Friction is because of the nature of surface, right? By now we know the causes. So if the surfaces are pressed hard, friction will increase. If the surface is rough, friction will increase. So one very common way to increase friction is to make the surface rough. So if you have a smooth surface, you want to increase the friction, just make the surface rough by pouring something which is uh, very rough in nature. For example, the traded tires. So if you look at the structure of the tires very closely, you will actually see that the surface of the tires here. So the surface of the tires here have some designs or patterns like this and they make the surface of the tire really uneven or rough. And this rough surface of the tire helps it to move well on the road because when it moves on the road, since this is also rough, so the chances of slipping is less. Therefore, the vehicle can move in a better way with treaded tires. Not only tires, you can look at your shoe soles. It is not show, but your shoe soles. So just the bottom of your shoe, if you see there are some patterns or designs made over it and it is made in such a way that the surface is not smooth. So it is made rough so that it can have a better grip on the ground. So this is also another way of increasing friction. Spreading sand on slippery surface, let us suppose if, if oil has been spilled over a surface in your house, what happens? You tend to slip over it. Why? Because the surface has become slippery. The friction has reduced. So now if you try, want to increase the friction, what do you do? First of all, you remove the oil. Just try it out. You just spread some, some sand over the surface. Now sand is, they are like particles, coarse particles. So when you spread sand over the surface, it, it makes the surface completely rough. That is why you would have observed that in uh, the desert area, like if you go near a sea beach, so it is very difficult to walk on sand because sand provides a lot of friction. The friction there is too high, which makes it even difficult to walk. So the friction also has to be in the appropriate amount. If there is no friction, we will not be able to walk. Even if there is too much of friction, that also makes us difficult to walk. In fact, when you look at the uh, performances by the gymnastic people so they would have, they would often need to hold objects and then hang over it or hold somebody else's hands or legs so they often uh, keep or they often apply some uh, rough material on their hand so that their friction on, on their hand increases so that they get a better grip when they hold something whether they hold a wire or a rope or somebody else's hands or legs so they they'll get a better grip so these are some of the places where we see that we try to increase friction by making the surface rough. Now comes the turn for reducing friction. Those places where friction is undesirable, we do not want friction to be there. Then in those places we try to reduce friction. So one such place would be obviously the machines because as I told you that due to friction a lot of energy gets wasted in the form of heat in machines. So we will always like to reduce friction in machinery parts. And how do we do that? Let us have a look. So applying grease in machinery parts. So if you apply grease, the surfaces will turn to be smooth and therefore friction will reduce. That is one way. In fact, you would have seen this application. You, you, if you want, you can try it out at your home also. Sometimes the doors or the window panes, they start making a lot of noise. Why do you get that noise? Because of friction. Because when you close the door or when you open the door, they tend to make the noise because of friction, because the surfaces are moving over one another, mostly these areas, because they are the joints. 
so if you apply grease or oil some oily substance to make the surface smooth in these areas you will see that the sound disappears that's because the noise doesn't come out anymore because the friction has been reduced by the application of oil or grease applying powder on carom boards i'm sure all of you would have played carom board sometime or the other so when you apply powder on the carom board what happens is the board becomes slippery so it becomes easier to strike your the to to strike various coins so the movement is smoother and quicker on the board lubrication what is lubrication now applying oil or grease or any such oily material on a, a substance to make it have or to make it slippery and smooth this process is called lubrication streamlining to reduce friction now what is streamlining this is this is something which we are going to discuss separately in a different slide but just to give you an intro so you would have seen that there are various objects which have a specific shape for example if you look at the aeroplane so aeroplane have got a very specific shape i mean a very unique and a very different shape and which helps them to fly in air right so this specific designing of objects so that they are able to reduce the friction is known as streamlining and the the way aeroplanes are designed so that they can reduce air friction because they are traveling through air similarly the way cars are designed they because they have they are also traveling on land but they also need to overcome the air friction so all those things are considered their shapes are being designed in considering the fact that they should be able to reduce air friction and therefore they should be able to move forward smoothly so streamlining is another way that is designing the shape of an object in such a way so that it can reduce the friction ball bearing what is ball bearing so i think uh, we will take it up in the next slide so that you are able to understand it better so ball bearing is nothing but uh, several balls kept inside like let us suppose inside a machine you have a part where you have one fixed plate and inside that you have another plate and this plate is moving so if this plate is moving over the outside plate which is fixed what is happening constantly there is friction which is being encountered between these two plates because the outer plate is not moving inner plate is constantly moving on the surface of the outer plate so what do you do you just make sure that these two plates are not in touch and in between the empty spaces you put some balls and what happens as these this plate moves now these balls keep moving over one another but the friction between this and this gets avoided so that ways friction can be reduced the effects or the adverse effects of friction can be reduced now we will spend some time trying to understand streamlining and ball thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again